In this video, we are going to write a React component using React.createClass. In the first two videos, we actually wrote React elements rather than React components. React components are built using React.createClass, which we're going to see here. I've got my index.html all set up here. I've included the React library, React DOM, and our Babel transformer div with the ID of app and a script with the type text Babel. When writing a React component, the first thing we need to do is name that component. So we do this just by declaring a variable. Let's go ahead and do that. So var first component equals React. So we're using the React library. I'm going to use the create class function. Now, this function takes one argument, and that is an object specification, which we'll see in a second. So, put some curly braces in, which represents a JavaScript object. Now, a component must implement a render method. And this render method will return a single child, which will be what gets rendered into the DOM. And we'll see that in a second. Now, for those of you that are familiar with object-oriented programming, uh, react.createClass is not the same. You don't need to instantiate it using the new keyword. This is already done for you. Let's go ahead and implement our render method within react.createClass. Within the object specification, we're going to create a render method, which is a class method. So you do this using the render keyword and then a colon and then function as it's just a JavaScript function. This function simply returns our JSX. Let's go ahead and put a H1 and say this is our first component and close that h1 off nice and simple that is a react component so we have the name of the component we have which is called the uh, display name we have react.createClass which takes an object specification and this object has a render method, which is simply a function that returns some JSX. Now, to get this component into the DOM, we need to use the React DOM library, which we've used twice before. So you should know what's going on here. You should be familiar with this. And of course, we're going to use the render method, which, as you know, takes two arguments. The first argument being the component we're going to render and the second argument being the DOM element we are going to render it to. In this case, our first component, our first argument is our React component. So this element is going to be first component. This is where the XML comes in. So it's just going to be first component and close that off. So this is a self-closing tag. As I said, it's kind of similar to XML. So you can name these tags or whatever you want. And obviously it corresponds to our component's name. So this component here is our tag here. And that's what's going to get rendered to the DOM. As before, let's go ahead and tell react-dom.render to render this to the div with the ID of app using document dot get element by ID and pass in the ID of app and that's it that is creating a react component using react dot create class let's go ahead and open this in the browser and check it out and there we go this is our first component head on back over to the index.html now just to kind of recap and put a few extra points in here, this return doesn't actually need to have brackets. You can do it on the same line. 
so we can return like so and this should work go ahead and refresh that and yet it still works but one thing to note is that you can't do two JSX components, JSX elements on the same line. So we can't do this. This is going to throw an error, as we'll see in a second. So we don't get anything here. And if we open up the developer tools, we see we get an error here. Adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Now what this means is that you can't have two elements at the same level. So if you imagine you have, to show you down here, the moment we have a H2 like so and a H1 above it. So what this means is they can't be at the same level. They have to be in a containing element like so. That's the structure you have to have. So they have to be within a containing element. I always prefer to use brackets, even if I'm doing a single line. Uh, I just think it looks nicer and it's more clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and use brackets. So at the moment, they're still on the same line. So let's go ahead and wrap these in a containing div. Close that one off like so. Tidy this up a little bit. And we just delete those. And this should work. It should get rid of that error. And it does. There we go. When developing, you're always going to run into errors. So there's no need to panic. Just read the error message. And normally, especially in React, the error will be pretty explicit. And you'll be able to work out what's going on. If you can't work out what's going on from the error message itself, you can always ask in the Q&A. And either I will answer or another student who might have run into the same error will answer also. Or you can shoot me an email at learncodewithtim at gmail.com and I'll try to get back to you within a couple of days. Or you can just Google it. Everyone else will have run into that error message before and there'll be lots of explanations and solutions out there. So no need to panic. And remember, if you see an error message about adjacent elements you just need to wrap your element in a containing div so just to recap this is building a react component using react create class which takes an object as its argument this object implements a render method which returns whatever we want it to return in this case we're returning some jsx of a div with a h1 and a h2. We then pass this to our React DOM render method, which takes the first argument, the element we want to render, in our case, the first component, shares the name of our class. And then the second argument is the element in the DOM that we want to render it to. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below, send me a tweet at CodeWithTim or send me an email, codewithtim at gmail.com.